Hey guys, it's Jacqueline. I wanted to share a project that I've been working on for the last month. I was working on making a prosthetic makeup, which includes the process of sculpting, molding, and using different casting techniques to create a makeup effect. I didn't want to include the entire process of making the prosthetic, just because it was about three weeks worth of work, so this video would be really long if I did. But basically, you need to life cast your actor's face, and then you get a positive cement mold of their face, and then you can sculpt on top of the mold. And eventually you get a negative mold of the sculpture, you're able to fill that with foam latex, and that foam latex piece is what you'll eventually glue to the actor's face. So here I started to paint the foam latex appliance, which is what I was trying to show you, and the prosthetic appliance will be a perfect fit for the actor that you took a cast of. And I also made a bald cap to go with it and some little ears as well. So this was the day of the application. I was really silly and completely forgot to film a before clip when my model had nothing on her face. But basically, she had a really fair complexion, blonde hair, blue eyes. She looked nothing like a chimpanzee to start. So I'd already put the bald cap on her here, and I just finished gluing down the foam latex appliance to her face. So I was just dusting on some powder around the edges to make sure that nothing stuck together. The main goal when doing a makeup like this is to trick the eye and to make it look believable. That's going to be the hardest part of doing a prosthetic makeup. It's keeping your edges preserved and making sure that they blend out seamlessly onto the rest of the actor's skin. You shouldn't be able to see where the line of the actor's skin is and where the appliance begins, so you'll spend a lot of time just blending and layering different colors. Foam latex is super lightweight and flexible, so you can see here that the appliance doesn't obstruct any of her natural facial movements, which is what makes prosthetic makeup so unique and so realistic. It's not going to be a mask over her face, it's going to be a piece that allows movement of the face and allows the actor to still do their job and fully emote. Here I'm just adding some packs as a base color. This is just a mix of prosate and acrylic paint. I found that if you're using packs as your base color, it tends to work best if you mix it to the lightest shade that you want your appliance to be, and then you can layer the darker colors over top. Just keep in mind though that this was my very first time ever doing a prosthetic makeup, so I am by no means an expert, but this is just what I figured out when I was painting. Here I was adding some alcohol activated paints over top. I was just kind of using a splatter technique and I used various different colors just to add a more realistic effect and to give it some more texture. I absolutely adore these palettes. I think they're great. They don't really look like anything special and especially mine because it looks so messy, but these paints really allowed me to achieve the right coloring that I wanted for this chimp. And you can see already just from the splattering how much better it looks. So it was a very long makeup process, so my chimp started to get hungry and was eating a bagel for lunch. I actually really love this clip because you can really see how well the appliance moves with her face and you can see just how realistic it is. And while she was doing that, I was just laying some synthetic hair on her head and probably yelling at her to make sure she didn't get any cream cheese all over the makeup. So as I was laying the hair, I just made sure that I had lots of different reference photos of chimpanzees out and what their hairline looked like and all that, just to make sure that I was laying the hair correctly and placing it in the right spot. And then I just went in with a brush and some black grease paint just to make sure that you wouldn't see any of her actual lips or her nostrils in any of the openings of the appliance. So here I'm just blending it all out around the nostril as well. So now it's time to style the hair. So I was using a mustache curler here, or at least that's what I think it was. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was a mustache curler. And I was just slightly curling the ends under of the hair, and I was just generally kind of roughing it up a bit and making it look a bit more ape-like. And then I laid down a few gray hairs around like the jaw and around the mouth, and then I gave those guys a little trim and we were good to go.
So here is the prosthetic makeup all done. It was about a five and a half hour makeup application, but keep in mind, like I said, this was my very first time ever doing a prosthetic makeup, so I can imagine once you get the hang of it, you'll be much quicker at it. And I also didn't even do the back of her head. I knew we weren't gonna be shooting at that angle today, so I didn't even bother wasting time there. So I'm sure as you can see, she was having a lot of fun playing around with different facial expressions and testing out how the prosthetic moves. So I thought I would show you guys a little bit of behind the scenes. Here we were just taking a few test shots and seeing how the makeup looked on camera. So that is basically how the prosthetic makeup ended up turning out. I was really, really happy with it, but I definitely see room for improvement for next time. I had a ton of fun doing this makeup, and I thought you guys would be interested and want to see some of the things that I get up to that I don't always share on this channel. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching this, and I will see you guys soon. Bye!